we'll we'll begin with the three flowers that we've identified a lotus a uh, foxglove and bluebells and we'll try and make a nice composition out of it we'll put a lotus in the center bluebells on the side and then foxglove coming straight up like that that's a very nice composition okay excuse me so <clears throat> let me put some pictures on the group so you know how these flowers look <clears throat> Two minutes. Okay, now I'll show you the pictures. I've just put them on the group. <clears throat> but you don't have to draw them looking at those pictures. I will draw them for you and then you can follow me. Okay, so this is a whole clump of bluebells. Looks very pretty. <clears throat> and this is just one single stalk here's another single stalk this is a lotus two lotuses and foxglove all right so i'm going to show you how to draw a basic structure of the flower here we are going to draw just the lotus petals in different shapes. So we're just going to draw different shapes and put them together and make a lotus flower. Here we're going to learn one shape and then we're going to repeat it in several places, mostly the same size. And in the fox glove, we're going to repeat the shape in different sizes. And then as we go higher, we're going to show buds of the flower. <clears throat> okay? All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to draw in part of my page on the right side of my page and the left side we're going to draw uh, some shapes in rough first and then we're going to draw it in fair. Anytime you're drawing something new, don't draw in fair right away because very often you will make some mistake and you don't want your fair illustration to uh, look messy. So always try out in rough and then make it in fair. Ma'am? Yes? Is it okay if I do the rough page work on the back page and I divide this page into sections for each? No, no, don't divide. No, no, don't divide anything. Try doing it like that. Just make all the flowers over here on, on about so much of the page. And then we'll make the composition here. At any rate, don't make the... Uh, rough work behind this and don't make it on a page where which you can't see or you'll lose the tool. Okay, so keep it right here. It's fine. So just the, about so much space. Don't draw lines or anything over here. The rough, rough work will be visible as rough work and the fair work will be seen as fair. Okay, all right. Now, to draw the lotus first. So how does the lotus look? It looks like it's a horizontal C shape like that. I'm going to draw it a little dark so you can see it. Okay. And in this shape, 
we have to fill some petals and some petals are like C shapes like this. And then some petals are inverted V shapes on top. All right, so the first petal we will make, we'll make like that. It's just a small petal over here. So it's a folded petal like that in the front. Here you will have similar petals like that. And then as if coming from the base, you will have a nice rounded petal. And from the sides, it'll look like they are half petals. Now, in this space in between, we are going to make more petal shapes. <clears throat> and you can also add some round shapes from here. Very fat petal uh, lotus we've got. <clears throat> now this particular petal, if you want Long, to... Can you slow down? Yeah. Just one bit. Here you can make it slightly rounder at the bottom. Are you able to see properly? Is everyone done? Yes. Sorry, what? I couldn't hear you. No, I still didn't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I'm seeing a lotus. You see a lotus? Okay, good. I'm glad because we are making a lotus. Okay, next one. Shall we move on? Okay, now for bluebells. The shape of a bluebell flower is like this. I'm just drawing it next to the lotus. You make a U, inverted U shape. Just watch me make this flower first. Just watch. And then you turn the two lines on the side upward. Curl them. Then bring them towards the center. Let me finish this. Don't draw this. Okay. Then you will draw another tiny U-shape like that coming up. A tiny U-shape coming up. And join it. And here you'll make a half U. So this is a curl that's coming towards us. Okay. And then we are going to attach this to the stem. Now, let's try drawing this on the stem itself. But you draw, draw it slightly small. So, draw this part you draw with me now. Draw a line that is maybe half a U. 
<clears throat> and then from all these places, you will have some lines, I guess, sticking out and some stalks sticking out like that. And here you can draw all these flowers. I think the center part, you can also make this like this. Because you're going to draw a slightly smallish flower. Just a U shape. Yeah, this is a much nicer shape to draw. And it's also easy. So we can draw many more shapes. Like I can draw one more behind over here. And make a big thick stalk of bluebells. See, multiple bluebells look really nice. <clears throat> Is everyone with me? Ma yes. Ma oh, I told you don't draw a line. Yeah, why do you draw lines? Okay. So you know what you can do, Viraj? Make your bluebell slightly bigger, longer. Right now they're very tiny. So make them slightly longer. And yeah, that V shape that you've made is looking quite nice. It's a good touch. Good idea. But you don't really need to. So I've not made any V shape over here. But yours is looking nice also. So that's a good option. Right. Shall we draw the foxglove now? So foxglove is big flowers that become uh, small, tall, inflorescence on top. So we are going to first make a light triangle it's it's like this it's not too wide it's just a narrow triangle and one line in the center and then here we are going to draw these flowers so we should ideally start drawing from the top because the flowers on top overlap the flowers in the bottom so from the top we will start making things like these we will first make buds which are just oval shapes one oval shape pointing up then you will have oval shapes pointing down and then you'll see how we are able to overlap some structures so the foxglove has a very cute uh, flower where you have the lower lip of the flower coming and covering the bud like that. So it's like a little cover from the bottom. As the ovals become bigger, they start becoming slightly rounded outward. Very slight. Huh? Don't make them like an S shape because that will look too extreme. 
Okay, everyone is with me. So this is not a hole. This is as if something is covering up. It's like a small cover on the lid. Now we are going to draw a hole. Though. So look at how I'm doing this. The individual fox glove looks like that. It's got <clears throat> almost a complete circular shape around which there are petals, about four petals. And the bottom petal does not have a line because this is how the flower is. So it should look like the flower is hollow inside. And then you have these little dots inside it. Now, if you want to draw something like that, how do you do it over here? You turn it around. So you first make this part. Then inside this, a little distance away, you can make that circle. And then you start making the petals. If you're comfortable making the flower itself, you can start from the bottom. So you can start making this oval shape, make the petals, and then make the body of the flower. <clears throat> Now you'll see how when I'm making the flowers in the center, I'm making this circle. When I'm making the flowers on the sides, I'm making an oval. See, now I make an oval. This is because I want to show foreshortening. Foreshortening is something that uh, something that happens to objects we see when they curve because things are in three dimensions. Like, for example, if I show you just this, it looks like it's a rectangle. Right? It just, it looks like it's a rectangle. Why do you know that this is a circle or it's a round object? Because there is shadow here, a little bit of highlight over here. So this is what makes it look, look 3D. Now here, if I show you this, it's my charger. This does not look 3D. But if I draw lines like that, this makes it look like it's 3D. But you know that this is much bigger. This shape is much bigger than this shape, right? See? But because it is foreshortened, that means it is going backwards into the depth, it will look smaller. So that's what happens over here. Along the sides, because it's going a little backward, it looks flattish. Now, if it's too confusing for you, forget it. You can just draw regular flowers and we will just turn the tips inward so that they look like their stalks are along the center. How is it going? Are you all able to do this? Now, some petals are also like that. You have these. And as you have mature flowers, you will have petals that come downwards. These are all still folding in. Even these can come down. This is like a beard. And then right in the center, you have the stalk. <clears throat> and you can also draw some nice leaves like this. So they all have some nice dots in the center that make them look very good, like orchids or lilies. And that, this is what makes them look very pretty, these clouds. Okay, now everybody knows how to draw these flowers. No questions, no doubts.
now i'm leaving this to you uh, you can compose them any how you want like for example you can make a lotus in the center another fox glove in the center and two bluebells on either side or you can have a lotus in the center two bluebells coming and then next to that two fox gloves going on the side right so do you want to make your own composition this we can do in the back of the book to figure out what would be a good composition so you have a lotus which looks like a cup <clears throat> you have a fox glove which looks like a cane because it's bending no not fox glove blue bells and then you have fox glove which looks like a in which has a triangular form so this is how you can decide which composition you want another composition could be this is one then there could be one where you can have the lotus right over here at the base the fox glove on top of it and from behind i think i'm going to do this one you can have blue bells coming on either side okay chalo let's do this So here's the lotus. I'm drawing it really light first. Uh, yes. I want to make it like this. Yes, you can do it that way also. Why not? Make make it that way and see how it looks. Okay, remember how the lotus was? First, we had a U shape, then we had a shape on the side. Oh, this is becoming really big. It should come a little to the left. I've drawn the basic shapes of the flower stalks, and I've drawn a really big lotus. So now I'm going to draw this in pen, and you can follow me, or you can draw your own. You know exactly how to draw all the flowers. So for the lotus, right in the center, first I will draw this one. petal which i'm going to make a little round from the bottom a little rounder below that petal that we made And then first i'm going to make this petal then i'm going to make the one from the side and right in the middle over here i'm going to <clears throat> keep adding smaller petals now for the fox glove i have my center line drawn i'm going to start with the oval top facing then slightly big bottom facing facing in the center a few overlaps here and there make your picture look very nice
Now, when you are adding more flowers, don't add a flower directly below the previous flower. Add it below the space, uh, in the space between two previous flowers. That tends to look nicer. And I'm going to add that real, like a beard petal also over here. Now, always remember whenever you're starting a composition like that, like a bouquet or flowers or a fruit or something like that, always start from the bottom of the page and then build up elements one on top of the other. Do you know why we should do that? Any guesses, anyone? Now, <clears throat> although I am drawing in pen directly, if you are unsure, you can first draw all the shapes in pencil and then draw it in pen. And as you come down the stalk, remember to hang them lower and lower and lower. So they look like a nice curtain along the sides. They're very pretty flowers. All done.
now that I've done this, I'm going to erase all my rough lines, all my guidelines, <coughs> and color. So for this, you can use whatever colors you want. You can, I'm going to use a mixture of watercolor and color pencil. Hmm. All right, now I want to show you how to paint or color both these, I mean all of these. So, do you all want to just look up for a minute? Yes, Ragini? Ma'am, can you have a look at my drawing? Yes. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. The Fox Club is looking wonderful. I think you, you can have... you can make all the other lines also nice and dark like your Fox Club. <laughs> now, if you're going to use watercolor and color pencils, you should use a nice light color for all these first. So I'm making a mix of some orange and red and crimson. And also make the mix in your palette so you see the color. So I'm going to use a very light version of this color on my entire lotus. So I'm just going to carefully paint the entire lotus with a nice fat brush in this delightful pink color that I have created. Now, if you're comfortable with painting large areas with a large brush, you can do all the whole flower together. Or else, you can also paint one petal at a time. Even that is fine. Remember when your colors are wet, just don't paint anything on the edges. So if you don't want colors to merge. The colors of the Fox Club in our uh, illustrate in our reference images are very beautiful. There's some yellow on top and pink at the bottom and red in the middle. <gasps> Excuse me. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to make these yellow. Then a little bit of orange. They almost look like rainbow colors. But remember the bottom part uh, where we've drawn the bottom petal. Try to not paint that part. Then I'll make it red, almost the same red as the lotus. And here again, I'm not painting the petals, although I think I can. No, let's not paint the petals. The 
this whole thing like the mouth of the flower we can leave it blank for now and we can make those dots inside it Ooh, look at how much paint i've got oh, oh, oh this is too much paint How's everyone doing? Do you have any questions? No questions, very good. It's a little scary for me. <clears throat> Kids, uh, students should always have questions. Now for the blue bells, I'm going to use an ultramarine blue. Ma'am, which blue did you use to color the blue bells? I have used ultramarine blue. <clears throat> See this one in the middle. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so my watercolor part is done. Now for and a pencil part. <clears throat> so I'm going to take these red pencils that I have and I'm going to make some lines on my lotus. So I'm going to take some lines and make them come towards the tip like that. Not right from the bottom, but just at the top. Or you can come from the tip and come down like that. And you can also shade it. <clears throat> so from all the tips, you can make the lines come down, but they have to come in a 
in like a radiating manner. Not just straight. Turn them towards the side. Ground them from the side. That's what will make it look more like the texture of a lotus. An actual real lotus. See, this is much easier to make than when you're making with pencil sometimes. And you can also make a few dark lines along all of the, on one side of the overlapping petals. <clears throat> Ma'am, can you show the foxglove colors? Yes. Uh they are just yellow, orange, scarlet, and crimson. Do you know where they are on the kit? This is gamboge, orange, scarlet, and crimson. And some of them can also mix, like the orange, orange and scarlet can mix, uh, or the scarlet and crimson can mix. That too looks nice. Orange. Now for the dots inside, you can just make some dots like that. Slightly big ones towards the middle part and then little ones along the edge and I suspect that the dots inside are the same color as what the color of the flower would be so if the, so if the color is yeah, red of the flower then you would have red dots if the color is orange you would have orange dots Even here, if you want to make some shadow, you can always make it with a slightly deeper color, like a blue. You can make it along the edge like this. Shadows are very nice because then your pictures look more three-dimensional. <clears throat> but if you're not sure, then you don't need to make them. And shadows are not always black. The shadow can be just a deeper shade of the existing color. So here, if I'm using orange, the shadow can be in red. On the crimson, the shadow can be in blue. The red, the shadow can be in crimson, so on. Yeah. yeah. Somebody had a question? Yes. Which color have you made the lotus? The lotus I made in a mixture of scarlet and crimson but a very watery scarlet and crimson not too much paint see like that very little bit and I spread it out quite a bit so it looks very light
Да. Now, when we have all this gap over here, you can fill it up with leaves also. So you can look for leaves of these flowers itself. The bluebells have got very nice leaves. They've got leaves which are just long like that. They don't come from the stem. They come from the base. So we could have we could have some maybe two leaves like that. And then for the foxglove, that also has its own leaves. So we can make some long stems like that. So wherever you see vacant space, you can make a, a shape that does not interfere with the existing shapes. Yes? Someone had a question? So this will fill up everything yellow. What does start? What does what start? You can't see where the plants start, the leaves start. Ma'am, can you see mine? Yes. I'm going to pin it so everyone can see it. <coughs> wow, beautiful. How pretty is that? How pretty. Very nice. Thank you, ma'am. So just to add a little bit. To our picture. I'm not going to make you guys do this, but I'm going to look for the botanical names of these flowers. Do you know what botanical names mean? The scientific names? Does anyone know what it means? Yes, ma'am. Tell me, can you explain? Botanical names are like scientists have named the plant some special name. 
yes Thanks. plants yeah everything uh, all sorts of stuff have got uh, special names um uh, and uh, like humans what is the scientific name for human beings do you know that homo sapiens correct uh do you know the one the uh, i think the nicest ones are for cats not cats actually lions they called pantera pantera so in this case i'm going to write down the names of these um plants just as part of our composition because i just love writing so this time i'm going to use a scale and i'm going to make what's called a baseline so that i can write correctly and straight so fox fox club is called a digitalis purpurea so i make two lines and then i'm going to write it in a nice cursive hand then we have for bluebells i don't know what they're called i'm going to write the name again on two sides and then for the lotus i'm going to write it over here at the bottom so this will look like how people in the past used to write historic compositions or plates now whenever you write a scientific name you write the first name in capital and the second name in small letters start starting with the small letter not the whole thing digitalis purpurea so here this purpurea is going to be in uh small letters <clears throat> then botanical name for bluebells my god this is very hyacinth o oh, hyacinthoids my goodness that's so difficult to even pronounce Asynthoids non scripta. <clears throat> And what is the botanical name of Lotus? <clears throat> Nelumbo nucifera. Great. I've checked the spellings. I've checked the spacing and everything. And now it should be easy to write. I'm gonna write a nice thin form.
Ma'am? Yes? My grandfather used to study botany. What are you saying? Wow. So he would have known all these. <coughs> uh, yes, but I think he has forgot some of them now. He has forgotten? <laughs> Next time you meet him, you can show him and then ask him, does he know any of these names? Okay. So I'm going to share this. Tomorrow. He's what? He's coming tomorrow. Uh -huh. So you can ask him tomorrow. Maybe what you can do is, I'm going to share this picture later. So perhaps you could try writing these yourself the way I'm writing and then show them to him and then ask him about uh, something about plants or how he studies or why plants have got such weird funny names. Yeah, he might be able to give you some more information and then you can tell all of us yeah, There. All done. See, it looks very nice now. <clears throat> okay, so how are your compositions looking? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see who's. I'm just going to check everybody's now. Very nice, Kuhu. Very good. Oh, great. Kaira, you made your class slightly bigger this time. Some of them at least. Nice. Were they a little complicated for you to paint or to draw? Ma'am. Abdul's are looking very nice. Good. Very good. Idika, how are you looking? Very nice. Lovely. I love the lettering below. Very good. Ragini is looking great. How nice. He started writing the names also. Lovely. Super. So now next week, what are we going to do? Any thoughts on the topic for next week? Nothing? Um, in the grown-ups class, I am doing sea life. Have we done sea life recently? Have we made fish or anything related to fish? No. Uh, not in a while as I can see. Oh, we did zebra fish. Wait, that was in May. In but, can do huh? We can do animals. Kuhu has suggested birthday doodle. Could you explain what you would like, Kuhu? Because we did some doodles before also. A birthday doodle could be something else. Could you explain? I don't know. I just found some. But I used to copy some, but I don't know. I just... No, it's a good idea. If you can just flesh it out. Sometimes if you remember, if you can just imagine part of it, um, just explain it a little bit so I know then what to expect. Otherwise, in my head, I'll imagine something and we'll do something completely different from what we like. Yeah anything. I just like to do that. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Do you have any other suggestions? Yes. Very nice, Abdul. What is that you're holding up? Is that for Independence Day? Very nice. Okay. So, I uh, let me do some research on what a birthday doodle is. 
maybe we can make a picture of small features mm -hmm. oh idhika has already made something with candles how nice that's nice very good uh, ma'am i wanted to ask you um, about art exams okay uh, elementary art exams so yes. um, how do you register for those usually for those exams uh, you have to register through a some school um and uh, either that or there are some private institutions that you that train kids in those exams so they uh, through them you can register i don't know if they you can go independently there should be no harm in doing that um but i don't even know where one goes how old are you now idhika um i'm 11 11 okay so i'm going to suggest um, wait till you 13 to give the exam okay. because uh, if you want an a which everyone wants obviously you should be slightly older than your skill is better and then you'll get an a the exam is the exact same for everyone they don't give you different exams for a different age so you should do your elementary in the 8th standard and do your intermediate in the 11th standard that is what i recommend to everyone by 11th standard then you become even better at your art and uh, you also given one exam so you know how much better you can do so you can work on that as well thank you ma'am okay all right yes let's see what kuhu has made oh my god that's so cute that is adorable what are these creatures these are so cute just random very nice they are so sweet hmm okay so i'll think some about what to do next week otherwise uh maybe we can do some kind of these doodle characters at a birthday party or something like that i like the challenge that kuhu has thrown our way birthday doodles let's see what we can do with that if anyone has any other ideas about birthday doodles just apply your mind and let's see what we can come up with okay one direction one direction wait 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 all right okay so i'll see you next week then bye everyone bye bye bye